All right, we are live. Thank you, May, for joining us once again <laughs> for our Arcane Art Therapy. Super excited for this. Mm -hmm. um, so Arcane is a TV show on Netflix with incredible animation so and good. made by incredible <laughs> artists. And so we're going to be doing this um, art therapy session. Once again, we are not a certified art therapist, but we're just taking this time to have fun and really enjoy painting itself without the pressures of um, of delivering on a super high quality thing, really just enjoying the process of it. And we're so glad to have you all here with us to enjoy that with us. Um, and it kind of just takes some of the, you know, the professional stuff that May has been doing and just lets her just relax and let's just all have a great time. So we're gonna have a conversation, chat with us in the, in the chat. And um, we'll be talking about Arcane, we'll be psychoanalyzing Jinx, I imagine, <laughs> um, quite a bit. Uh, May is quite a fan, so that's fun. And if you're interested about what Evolve is, then check out the links in the description. We do a training program to give you skills like May's demonstrating here. Awesome. Okay, May, so what are we up to? Um, so as you can see, the board is not totally blank. I, um, about two days ago, I decided to do kind of like a first pass of like the general like colors of the atmosphere um, to kind of like give myself like a sense of like where everything goes. Cause like, if you look at the reference, there's like a decent amount of moving parts. You know, there's like the boxing machine and the fence and then like this design in the background, like this arch and like fancy like fluorescent lights and stuff. So I was like, I kind of wanted to like ground the entire like composition in like just colors and values first before I like went in and like rendered today. So um, I think I'm gonna start, I'm kind of just gonna paint this directly, but also loosely. So not, this is gonna be like, like my final pass on it. Um, there's not gonna be like any layering or anything. Um, so I'm just gonna paint it directly, but try to keep it as loose as possible so that, but like also maintain structure so that things are very simple and very clear, but um, not like super, super refined. So we'll see how that goes. And I think I'm gonna start with the area surrounding Jinx behind her and then kind of just branch out there and then finish by dropping her into the envi entire environment. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> I hope it goes well. Awesome. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm showing everyone the, the painting here, all those nice rich red colors, which actually speaking of colors, this <laughs> is my, uh, my new favorite question for our art therapy sessions. If you had to describe how you're feeling at this very moment using an old Holland oil paint color, what would it be? And for those of you who are not familiar with the <laughs> options, I looked up um, old Holland's color chart, which is quite extensive and really cool gradients and things. So I'm gonna drop that in the chat. Um, hopefully that goes through. And so if you click on that, you get to see a whole bunch of um, Old Holland colors and let us know in the chat what color you, that, that, uh, that resonates with how you feel. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just for some good fun. Um, yeah, for me, I looked at this earlier, this uh, color chart, and the one that stands out to me that I kind of really feel like right now is the Chev Green Deep. It's got like a nice contrast, like when you kind of add more density to it, it really, gets darker, but with very little, it gets, it's still very bright and uh, kind of very kind of oceany color. And I'm working on this uh, stormy painting <laughs> and I'm going through some storms of my own as I work on the painting. <laughs> and so I'm kind of just feeling like I'm in the midst of it, but it's still electric and it's still exciting. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. May, how are you feeling? And where are you at with, uh, if you had to choose a color that you're feeling? Mm. Well, like right before the stream, I was feeling pretty, there's like this nice gradient in there. It's like kind of between like turquoise and ultramarine. So it's just like all like the rich blues. And I was really enjoying that. But now that I'm painting red things, probably <laughs> more in that zone. Mm. I don't know the exact names of stuff, but I imagine like some form of crimson. <laughs> Maybe if you look at the palette, something on your palette. Oh yeah, just choose a color on my palette. I like this color a lot, this dark violet. Oh, okay. Um, no particular reason. <laughs> it's like very saturated, but also very dark. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't appear in nature, so. 
<laughs> Feels a little special. <laughs> Let's see, Pam said E31. I told you they're gonna use like the, they're gonna use, it's gonna, it's gonna be like a, like a chess board where they have to give like coordinates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, uh, it's cobalt, violet, light. That sounds fun. It's, uh, let's take a look at your palette again. <laughs> it's a little bit lighter than the one that you have there. Okay. Oh, Kelly also said, I think I'm drawn to the purples. Huh, it's a pretty purple day for everybody. Interesting. <laughs> pretty purple. Okay, and here's a question from Kirin. How do you decide what part you start? I know in Evolve we learn to start with a more darker part, but with a more complex background. How do you take this decision? And actually, speaking of that, let me pull up the reference. And uh, I should have done this earlier, so I apologize. We're about to see incorrect reference, so I'm going to delete this. <laughs> should have done this earlier, but I'm going to drop in our reference and blow this up for everybody. Making some last minute edits. So there's the reference that she's working on. Okay, so um, yeah, so with, with a more complex background, May, how mm -hmm. do you make this decision of knowing where to start? We actually talked about this right before we <laughs> jumped on the live stream. Um, I just kind of, I just felt like this red like in the middle was like the most average like color and also value for like the entire painting. Um, it's not like super bright and it's not like very, very saturated. Um, and it's also like closest to, you know, like Jinx, like the character in the middle. So it's kind of pertinent to grounding her as well in the entire composition. So I thought it made sense to kind of establish this like kind of base environment, if that makes sense first, and then kind of like allow it to spill over into the rest of the background. So, like, choosing, like, one part of the image to be the foundation, I guess, or kind of like a reference for the rest. Oh, I made a mistake. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> You're looking to create context for the main subject. Right. Um, so then when you get to the main subject, exact specificity, you know, what your values and colors should be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yes, but in to answer Kareem's question, you know, you referenced starting with the more darker part. In From blocks one to three, we have everyone start with their shadows and their darkest shadow. Oh, I apologize. I don't know if everyone could hear me there. So I'm going to start over. So, um, yeah, so Kareem was saying about the um, starting with the more darker part. So in Evolve, we do have our students to begin, as they're learning the process and how we paint, um, we start with the shadows. And so, and we start with the darkest shadows that they're painting, and then we kind of work our way up from the lights there. But in, in other techniques that we teach later on in the program, we tend to work into the backgrounds and start creating that overall context, um, just as May was describing earlier. So I hope that was helpful. Okay, she's getting some more colors in here. Um, yeah, Laurel said, Hi everyone, looking forward to my therapy session. <laughs> um, DMC said, Crimson and purples are great. Love it. Sarah Price said, Red Gold Lake. Because it looks very aut autumnal. Aut autumn? I think autumnal is the way to pronounce that. And now that it's September, I'm shameless about my autumn love. But also, love the deep reds May is working with. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go look up that color real quick. Let's see. Red Gold Lake. Where is it? Maybe it's not on this one, unless it's over here. Not finding it, but maybe it's somewhere on here. There's a lot of colors. <laughs> there are a lot of colors, colors on here. Um, but yeah, very cool. 
Edie said, I feel like a beautiful summer day. Mid 80s, Fahrenheit, upper 20s, Celsius, temperatures. <laughs> uh, mid 20s, RH, not sure what that is. Fluffy clouds scudding across a cobalt blue sky. Wow. Scudding. Just painted us a picture. Love that. <laughs> It's on the one I posted, it's more orange. Oh, I've just found it. C-133, Red Gold Lake. Yeah, that one does stand out. That's nice. I feel like that does hit every color of the, of the leaf once it goes red. You're missing out, May. We're looking at all these colors. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So once again, we're just gonna Oh, RH is relative humidity. Interesting. So oh, if wow. you look into the reference, you see that kind of darker red color in the background. May is working on that. Okay, Karina, no problem. Uh, one question. Since the artist said she was a fan of Arcane, what does, okay, so this is for you, May. Oh my God. What does Jinx represent to you? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. That's a. I don't know if this question can be answered in 30 seconds. That's a complex question. So yeah, let's, let's jump into it. So I don't know if we said yet, but we're probably gonna be sharing some spoilers. Um, it's been a year since Arcane came out. Mm -hmm. And um, since we're hoping to have a nice lively discussion with all of you, we thought it'd be better just to share our thoughts on it, assuming that people have watched it. And if you haven't watched it, no problem. Um, hopefully it's still a cool discussion. Yeah. Because it's pretty interesting topics, I think, um, that were brought up in the show. All right, May, so, Jinx, let's hear it. Um, she's like, well, for people who don't know who Jinx is, um, she's like, she started off as like a video game character in the game uh, League of Legends. It's like a very popular like online video game. And um, she's kind of like the, the crazy, like, crazy but, like, cute mascot of, like, the game. Like, pretty much, like, everyone loves her who plays the game, like, as a character. Um, but in Arcane, like, instead of being, like, this kind of shallow, like, haha, I'm, like, insane, and I like blowing things up, and, you know, I have, like, this giant gun, and I laugh at everything. Uh, like, they definitely gave her, they gave her, like, an entire, like, backstory of, like, how she became, like, unhinged, and, like, definitely, um, like, fleshed out like she's not like just insane for fun obviously like she underwent like you know like severe like childhood trauma and um developed this like insane persona as like a coping mechanism really to because she has like really unresolved like conflicts like with her sister um and like doesn't know how to like perceive herself properly and everything and i don't want to spoil too much but like basically she kind of at least in like a broader media sense she represents like the power of a backstory to really like flesh out a character instead of you know just like a very shallow like entertaining uh like pleasant uh trope to engage with like there's like a lot of potential in any character or set of traits if you really just um like sit down and like think about it it's like why is someone this way you know so it's just like interesting and i just really appreciate the writers for um Kind of pulling so much from this very like one-sided persona that was originally installed in the game. So. said Arcane was one of the reasons I started Evolve. On my part, really? to <laughs> trauma, I was amazed of um, how artists portrayed a romanticized but magnificent character that is Jinx. Thanks and bye all. Oops, I had my mic off again. I apologize. Karina, I just read your message out loud um, to May. But yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's really cool. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if this is a if uh, diehard Arcane fans would be upset with me for saying this, but I, it, she kind of, Jinx kind of reminds me a bit of 
Harley Quinn, but like Harley Quinn is, I don't know, I guess I don't know much about Harley Quinn, but <laughs> Jinx has a lot, there's a lot more like mental and like they take a, they take, the, the, the take on it is very psychological and mental trauma and really taking a deep look into that so that Jinx is a very sympathetic character. Um, so she's ca kind of chaotic and all over the place, but you sympathize with her as well. It's, she's a very relatable character, um, and the way that they portrayed that is, was, pretty, was pretty neat. I think it was phenomenally done. I don't know if she was like relatable, but definitely like you could see, you could like understand, mm -hmm. I guess, and that's like what's important. Cause like the show, the show writers and creators were like, like one of the main questions they wanted people to think about with Arcane is like, can a monster ever be forgiven? Like even if you know, like like can someone can you forgive someone's like actions even if you know like where they're coming from, right? Like how independent um, is like are someone's actions from like where they derive their motivations from derived, sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and can there be redemption? Right. It's a big theme um, throughout the show. And I think that's not something we should spoil mm -hmm. at the very end of it. But um, they, the show kind of keep, continues to ask that question of, yeah, that forgiveness and redemption and can you come back and can you be... Can you be healed? Mm -hmm. um, how much does a past trauma affect you? And can you, um, can you go back to the way that it was? Is that, what, is that the form of you know, redemption? Or is there, is there another way? You know, a lot of kind of real questions, I think, that are, it's like, uh, one of my friends, see when he describes, like he was describing another movie, and he's, he was, it was like he said, this movie is, uh, it's about tra time travel. This is like a different movie, but it's not about time travel. It's like they use time travel as an interesting idea, but it's like as a, as a framework to really talk about something else. And I feel like Arcane does that as well. It's like, this is about a video game backstory but it's not, <laughs> you know? There's so much more to it um, in the story that a lot of people can pull from. Um, but I got some questions earlier that I want to bring up um, from Edie. I'm not sure what's happening in the reference photo. It looks like a human and some robots, but I don't understand what the interaction is. Okay, so um, this is the character is Jinx, and she starts off as like one of our one of our heroes, and then she becomes like one of the villains because um, of stuff that happens. And uh, so this is her like after becoming like a villain in, in the show, or at least like playing that role. And um, like the machine she's standing in front of is like a boxing machine that she used to train with, that she used to train on like with her sister um, and like the rest of her friends when she was younger, like before she was, before she became the villain and like before she split from her sister and her friends. So it's a very like nostalgic, like, but also like kind of bitter moment for her, I would say. Hopefully that is understandable. <laughs> mm -hmm. Without giving too much away, question mark. I don't know why I did the outside first. That was silly of me. It's okay. I'm gonna zoom the camera out just a little bit mm -hmm. while you're working on the background there. Jinx was also a bit of an artist. Was she? she yeah, she kind of put her graffiti neon stuff everywhere. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's like her little death messages were all in very cute, like neon pink graffiti. <laughs> That's like also what, like part of what made her character so eerie is that like mm -hmm. she acted a lot like a kid, but like her intentions were often very like sinister. So. Right. You were saying earlier that it's like she never fully grew up. Mm -hmm. She never really like got closure on her childhood self. 
And so she kind of develops this like unhinged, like cunning, kind of ruthless personality as like a coping mechanism, as like a, I don't know who I'm supposed to be, but this is, but being this like extreme in my behavior is going to protect me from anything. Um, so in a lot of ways, she just never gets to grow up properly and becomes very unhinged. <laughs> That's definitely like way too brief of an explanation, but it's okay. <laughs> way too what? It's way too like brief of an explanation, <laughs> but it's okay. Well, you're welcome to go into depth. Mm. Like I said, spoilers ahead, probably. <laughs> And yeah, I'd be curious to hear what other people um, think if they've watched the show, um, what they think of, of Jinx. And I think another point of discussion, though, is what this show has done for art. Oh, for sure. Right? Because um, even if you just do a quick Google search of Arcane and some of the images, you'll see that it's a very stylized animation. Like, to me, the way that it feels is as if the artist had free reign um, or really good direction, probably a bit of both, and um, you could just tell that they were having fun when they made it. Um, and so that kind of sp speaks something. And then, <clears throat> but I, I could be wrong, because I know, May, you watched the, like, how it was made. Yeah. Did they <laughs> take, like, 3D models and then digitally paint on top of them? Like yeah. How, that's, what, that's how they did it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So that's, it's kind of like, imagine... Um, I don't know paintings, but like animated. It's like not like Pixar or anything, like anything even like remotely like that. It's like museum level, like <laughs> paintings for like every single frame. And it's like, it's so great. They actually won an Emmy, I think, like for just outstanding animation recently, so. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of like very refined digital modeling and then like painting over um, and then obviously like the software for dictating lighting and everything was like very well put together and then like the final compositing render at the end was also very specific. Mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out what this transfer line means. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, they so, actually um, outsource. Sorry, uh, they outsource yeah. the animation to like this French, this French animation company that only been doing like music videos, like just like content up to like a few minutes long, and um, but they just really um, appreciated like the style and diligence and also just like extreme perfectionism and attention to detail that they had over there. Um, so I think that's also a contributor to why it's like, it feels so like far away from what you usually see in like American animation. Mm. So. Yeah, the series, the behind the scenes series is like on YouTube, it's called Bridging the Rift and there's like five videos and they're each about like 20, 25 minutes long. And it's super cool and you should all go watch it. <laughs> I will definitely be rewatching it at some point. Yeah, I would describe the the uh, the style as both very structural but also very loose. Mm -hmm. And maybe the the precision of doing the three D modeling and then painting on top of that mm -hmm. really contributed and kind of they they maybe the artists felt like they could really loosen up because the structure was already there, right? Um, and so then they could simply focus more particularly on. Um, how the brush strokes went down um, and how they contributed to the overall feel. Okay, Pam just shared Arcane is now a three time Emmy winner. Let's go. After claiming a trio of awards for individual achievement in animation. It worked on it for six years, which is like insane. Lots of back and forth trips to France to visit Fortiche, which is on the, uh, the French studio they worked with. Mm. They were actually like turned down multiple times um, when they first just wanted to like make a TV show out of the characters. But 
yeah, I'm so glad they did it. <laughs> Another thing that I mentioned this earlier about uh, Jinx being a bit of an artist, but I really like that they included the, like even if you look, let's say, I'll pull up the reference. If you look really closely in the, in the background here, you'll see like a pink, in the reference you'll see like a pink, um, pink lines. And I believe that would be something that Jinx would have done. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Man? Yeah, yeah. So Jinx would sort of expressively just make art wherever she goes. It was sort of the, their, the show's way of saying that Jinx was here kind of a thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so I think there's also a connection between, I mean, there certainly is. I mean, obviously, you know, just the, the whole theme of art therapy and that, that it exists. It was very fitting, I, I thought, for her character that she would gravitate towards art as an expression to sort of get the, the faces out. Because like throughout the show, she's, she sort of sees uh, faces of some of the traumatic events that happened. Mm -hmm. um, and so then she sort of like puts them out onto the environment that she's in with her art to sort of try to release them in a way. So there's that, that. There's also that connection here. So I think it's kind of cool that we're even doing this subject, um, <laughs> because not only is it just so beautifully done artistically, but also there is such a connection between mental health and dealing with trauma and and being able to process that through art. But you know, I don't know that I can find the the eloquent words to fully describe it as a since I'm <laughs> art therapy is not something I'm well versed in. But it is certainly really cool. And I think it's really cool that people are exploring art therapy more and more lately. I'm like actually really relaxed for this one. <laughs> awesome. I think the one we did like t last week, yeah, I was definitely more worried because it's like, you know, it was like a master copy and everything and it was like realistic and all this stuff. But, um, I don't know, this image feels like, it feels like a painting already while the other one felt like something a little bit elevated. I don't know why, probably because mm. in my head it's like still like a master copy, which is like silly, but. <laughs> Question from Mitchell. I'm so terrified of color. Any tutorials that just get you there. I feel like whenever I try anything other than a sketch, it gets ruined. Um, so, I, it'd be much easier for me to actually take a look at your work, Mitchell, to be able to give you advice on what the next thing, like, for you to focus on would be. And I give a lot of advice to artists. Um, and so actually, if I can look up, if, let's see, I think it's, let me pull up this link. I'll drop in a link for you if you want to send me some of your art and I can take a look at it and then really sort of know where to direct you. Because like I could answer your question assuming that you are where you are and then potentially point you in a direction that you're not, that wouldn't be the best thing for you. So I'll drop in this link and then I'll kind of give a more general answer for how Evolve approaches color and how we get people ready and confident to tackle color. So um, let me just drop this link in. Okay, so if that link doesn't work, let me know. So how Evolve gets people to color, we actually first start in Grayscale. I know a lot of um, education things do and they, and they should. You, you wanna start in Grayscale because Grayscale allows you to focus on values. Values are how light and how dark something is. So for instance, if you look in the background of May's painting here, that um, like that those darker marks 
are values that are sort of starting to form sort of like a humanoid structure um, in the back and kind of looking at the reference there. If you can see, there's sort of like a boxer back there. So those are like darker values. You could say generally that they're both red, generally speaking, but the value is what makes it darker and what makes it stand out, gives it contrast, gives it form. And so values are, are more important than color when it comes to giving something structure and making it feel three-dimensional and have form. So if you can just focus on getting form, turning form, creating depth, like making things feel like they push in or, or, or feel like they come out, then you're already doing, like, if you get, get that locked down and you're not worried about color in the process, you can get through it much more quickly and then you'll be more confident to tackle color. So we have a whole process for how we first approach these paintings in grayscale and teaching you how to see values in relation to each other and you're using edges to turn, turn the form and everything. Um, and again, we've got links in the description, so definitely check them out. I'd recommend you, for you, I would say, scroll down to the depth course and watch that one. It's like a five minute video from Kevin, the founder of Evolve, and he breaks it down really well. Um, so, but basically, you're kind of just taking step by step by step. Like, it, you might say it sounds scary, but we start you off in painting squares, and you have four different values to paint those squares. It's like, okay, well, that's, you know, painting inside a box. That's not so hard, right? You're not painting cubes, you're just painting two-dimensional squares, getting familiar with how the brush interacts with paint, how to release paint. So you really start really small, and you just work your way up building confidence as you get success every step of the way. As you're doing this, as you're starting to see values in relation to each other without worrying about all the scariness of color, you're getting more and more confident and you're getting better at seeing things in relation to each other, which is integral for how you approach color. Because when you're working with color, color is a whole range. It's not just red and blue. It's this shade is slightly more red than this one, which is relatively more blue, even if you're t talking about two grays. So you have to see, you know, how one color is a little bit more like another color than another one, and it's all about relationships and seeing those things in comparison to each other. But that, that's, that's not easy to jump into immediately. And so I imagine that if you try to jump into color, if you don't have a solid understanding of value and, and being able to see these relationships with specificity, you're really going to struggle with color and it's going to be overwhelming and then you're going to hit a wall and then you, you might feel like a failure, as I often do when I fail, and then you have to sort of walk yourself back and be like, okay, what's the next step? How do I you know, rebuild my confidence again? So we want to avoid that and we want to teach you things, we want to challenge you, but we want to be getting you success and building that confidence along the way. If you can see things in relation to each other, like, this is what happens on a neural pathway level. Like, your brain gets really good at doing this. It just takes some time, and you take one step at a time. So in between value and color, we teach drawing. And drawing is, again, all about proportions and shapes and sizes in relation to each other again, right? So, like, the helmet in the background right now is larger compared to the head of Jinx, who hasn't been painted in yet. And so that's just, like, a quick relationship thing, but you have to make all of these relationships with everything and sort of put them into the right place. And this happens as you build experience. It's hard to fully teach that as a formula. You just have to give someone a formula for building the skill set and the ability to actually see these things. Man, I'm so verbose at talking about these concepts. But anyways, <laughs> once you get there, <laughs> which actually doesn't take very long. We do 20 exercises in block one, which is all about value, 20 exercises in block two, which is drawing, and then painting from life, so you draw what, what you're seeing, understanding what you're seeing, breaking it down, drawing it, and then painting that from life, and then you get into color. And when you're getting into color, so now let's just assume, Mitchell, that you're ready for color. You, get, you got value down. Well, let's not jump into the deep end right away. First, Let's just try to match one color, one general color that you see like in a, in a photo. And maybe you, you're mixing on the palette with a palette knife and then you take that, you take a little bit of that color from the palette, throw the palette over here. So let's say that you're 
trying to match the the color of the light bulbs in the in the left side of the painting. And I imagine that I guess is that that greenish yellow color. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. so that greenish yellow color, which looks really green on the palette, is actually the color that is in the center of the light bulb, like on the on the left side. Yeah, Mitchell, start with monochrome. But what I'm describing now is I'm, I'm assuming that you've got you've got that part down. But you would if you're getting into color, you just focus on matching your colors, one color at a time. And maybe you make multiple mixtures, multiple iterations. You try, okay, what if I try a little bit of this yellow with this white or this yellow with this red and see what happens and try to remember the different combinations and how they got you different things. Like you could have five different mixtures to try to arrive at the same point and then compare which one you think is the best. It's just really breaking it down and getting very specific. But what happens is so often we just try to jump straight into the painting because of course, that's sort of what we see people doing on YouTube and what we want to do ourselves, and so we jump straight into it. But we're not taking steps. Take, take the steps. If you just walk up a flight of stairs, you'll find yourself at the top. If you try to jump across a chasm that you haven't trained for in, in long distance jumping, for example, you might fall down that chasm and then have to drag yourself back out again. So just take one step at a time, and it's much more manageable and it's much more easy. You just do that, and then, um, so in, in block, this is now at block three in Evolve. So you're matching colors. Um, we start with just our lights. You're just matching the colors and the lights, and we keep our shadows gray because light and color are basically the same. That's a gross summary of, <laughs> of that, but, um, so what that means though is that anything that has absence of light would have absence of color, and so shadows are relatively gray compared to your lights and so that starts to give you a sense of framework when you're mixing your colors you're able to not only match the hue but also the value of that color mixture so again looking at we have one two three four basic shades of red on the left side of the palette and they all have slightly different values they're not just different shades of red they're also slightly different shades in value um, but anyways, this might be going, going over people's head, but if just watch, the, watch some of the videos, check out the links in the description, and we can get you there. We can walk you on that step and make walking into color just like that, walking into it and not leaping into it, not jumping into the deep end and being expected to swim, but just taking one step at a time. Right? And, I, and I've said this before, even with these live streams, we have taken steps in the direction of these live streams, you know? So actually, I know we were gonna say this later, May, but <laughs> I'm thinking about jumping into a live stream very soon, and I'd love to do that. And, you know, I would expect myself to be able to do the kind of things that May is doing, but I don't really know yet because I haven't done it. So I'm gonna start with something much more simple than what May is doing now. And May already has a few victories and successes <laughs> under her belt, but I don't. And so I know that my, my skill set is great, but painting, talking, under the time pressure with everyone around, I don't know. And so much easier for me to just take a step, focus on something small, do a live stream with everybody, talk with you all, get to know you all more personally, whatever, and then see how that goes. And then find the next challenging step that I'm confident that I could tackle. And that's how we approach color, same thing. I say it all the time, let me be quoted. <laughs> <laughs> Failure is a great teacher. Confidence is built by small, successful. Okay, but still partially. That's okay. Okay, we are back. Thank you everyone for waiting for us while we got our computer rebooted here. <laughs> um, let me know if there's any difficulties, if anything is acting slow and we will try to resolve it as best we can. But I uh, appreciate you guys just hanging on and waiting through for those few minutes while we got that figured out. Thank you. Um, I think, but I think my point came across, so I'm just gonna close off that topic. <laughs> well, man, I, I get on these rants. Uh, I wouldn't call them rants. I would call them 
educational soliloquies, you know, because rants. Educational solilo so soliloquies? Yeah, because like rants are like angry and mm. usually self righteous. So it's definitely not what you're doing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Glad to hear that I'm not self righteous. <laughs> I feel like you've never been called self-righteous. <laughs> I can't see you ever being self-righteous. Mm, I probably have once or twice. That's silly. I don't, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's fine. So are you still feeling relaxed? You said you were feeling quite relaxed about this painting. Yeah, I'm kind of just like, Letting it do its thing. Just like filling it as I see on the, based on the reference and like not worrying about it too much beyond that. <laughs> and you were saying how you feel a lot more confident with this one or, or relaxed? Um, maybe not. <laughs> I want to say confident, but I think just relaxed, yeah. Robert said, that was righteous and rad, but not self-righteous. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> okay, take care, Dark Star. Bye, Dark Star. It happens. Nobody saw that, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> it was a good catch, though. Atmosphere. <laughs> Just waiting to go down to a smaller brush and like put in precise marks and feel better. Mm. Now we're just putting on all the big structures, big I'm forms. I'm surprised you're doing as much as you are in the background. I wasn't expecting that. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, but well, here we are. No yeah, worries. I'm like, well, I mix the colors, and it it's is like 7:46, though. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's like filling faster than I thought it would. So. Mm -hmm. I think I will go down to a smaller brush like, very soon. Oh, actually, I should probably fill in that side first, so maybe not. Small brush of death. <laughs> Turning on tunnel vision. Does anyone know why I say that, small brush of death? I'm curious if people know what I'm referring to. It's not anything specific, but simply a an idea why you might use a big brush versus a small brush for certain areas. Brian said causes over focus on detail too early. Yeah, yes, definitely. <laughs> and what can happen is you start yeah, you start focusing on those small details, and then by not focusing on the bigger picture, you you lose you can lose the overall impression and what holds the painting together, the glue that keeps it like structured. And because when people see a painting for the first time, you've got just a few nanoseconds to capture an impression. But if your painting is fractured with all these tiny brush marks everywhere. It's so easy to get caught up in this little thing and that little thing and to lose 
that overall impression and structure. And it's not to say that's impossible, but it's just you can make it much more manageable. And when you have a big brush, big brush in your hand, you tend to think in bigger shapes. Mm -hmm. The hammer and nail analogy. That sounds familiar, but that's not coming to mind about what that is exactly. Feel free to explain, Sarah. Oh, Kevin says it all the time, I guess. Does he? Is there something that Kevin says that I don't know about? What? <laughs> no, honestly, like, me too. What? <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> it's okay, even Kevin forgets what he says sometimes. This is true. He's a, he's a library. Oh. <laughs> That's right, he does say that. Sarah Price said, if you're holding a hammer, everything looks like a nail. <laughs> Oh, I haven't heard that one. That's so true, yeah. I remember Kevin, just Kevin saying that. He's such a visual speaker, you know? Mm -hmm. It's cool. Small brush time. Small brush time. Small brush time. Put some green first, and then it's small brush time. I lost my transfer a little in here, so I'm kind of just making it up. <laughs> I'm gonna move this down a little bit because it's catching some glare. So like the top of the reference isn't easy to see. Okay, that's like a lot better. Yeah, that's your reference there. Well, come on. Come on. It's like a little bit bent. So the top is like curving upwards, so it's catching a lot of light. Do you need help putting that up? It's okay. Thank you though. Just give me like 15 seconds. <laughs> How does that brush taste? Delicious. It tastes like success. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey. <laughs> um, put this put this one down. Throw this out. The thing is, I just wanted to find like those little those like window panes, I guess, like the kind of like framing beams in the background a little bit better. And then I want to add the lights and just like more colors into the boxing machine. And then I'll go back to the left and add the fluorescent yellow green stuff. And then jinx, see how that goes. <laughs> that sounds so easy when I just say it like that, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah, nice we'll and... dib dab here and a dab dab there. <laughs> We were talking earlier about Jinx when she was a child. Mm -hmm. How it all began. Just a little girl looking for acceptance. Well, she was accepted, but it's like she didn't fully believe that she was. Mm -hmm. And she wanted, she felt like she had to do something to earn her place. Right. When the, the, starting, the starting point was that she didn't have to do anything to earn her place with her friends. Yeah, like she caused like a huge disaster because she tried too hard to like fulfill this own vision she had for herself, which is like she wanted to prove herself. And so she, um, I guess we already spoiled stuff. So she like okay. built she like built something um, to try to save her friends out of like a very dangerous situation, and it wound up like backfiring completely because she didn't really know what she had built. Um, she used like a new piece of technology that was like totally like untested and everything, and um, it caused like this huge explosion. And um, like <laughs> it uh, did damage to her friend group <laughs> and. Um, her older sister like blamed her for it like very explicitly and was very angry with her. Um, and her older sister was the one who'd like always stood up for her whenever like the other people in the friend group would like kind of complain about how like Jinx or Powder back then like didn't really contribute or was never really reliable. So to have like the one person that was always on her side like abandon her and be so angry at her like. It confirmed the, the lies that she was already telling herself. Right. Or the, I guess maybe the, the suspicions that she had yeah. about herself. And then also she like lost trust in her sister. Because um, like, oh wow, like even my sister really thinks this of me, you know. And so that caused like a lot of trust issues going forward. And she lost trust in herself, kind of. Mm -hmm. Like she, she trusted herself for some things, but I would say on a deeper level she, she couldn't. Mm -hmm. Because she believed that she messes things up, you know? Right. And so she became, by being Jinx, she is somebody who messes things up <laughs> yeah. for other people. Yeah, and she makes that intentional now. So, kind of just owning it. It's a very bitter way. Yeah, to me, those are aspects that make her relatable because, like, everybody is looking for acceptance and finding their place and looking for love. <laughs> I 
another theme of the show was, I think, was like about her figuring out what is true, you know? Mm -hmm. And you're kind of hoping that the sisters reunite and come together and that they both explain their side of the story and that they just have this reconciling moment where mm -hmm. they both, like the truth sort of comes out and becomes clear and... They get closure. Yeah. They get closure. But instead you see both of them wrestling with like assumptions and... Um, because as the viewer, we get to see both sides of the, the different stories happening. We know it's true, but we see them making decisions based on things that are not true because they're just assuming, it's like they're so quick to, to think that like something can't happen or can't be said or mm -hmm. can't be resolved. That was one of my takeaways from this show was like, okay, when I, when I have times when I'm feeling like not accepted or something, like look, look for ways to find the real truth about the situation. And like, you have to kind of, I guess like take a humble pill in a way because <laughs> it's easy to, in times when I felt like not accepted my pride will kind of come in and be like, oh, well, like, this is who I am. And it is what it is. Yeah. So I'm going to carve my own path now. When in reality, it could be like a misunderstanding or something that needs to be clarified and cleared up. And so it's like, okay, well, I don't want to end up <laughs> in the, the to, I don't want to suffer in the way that Jinx has suffered for things, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like, maybe I can, I can, make an effort to find the truth about like the relationship with that person or um and try to like yeah but reality is tough because sometimes there's situations where you don't really get that closure and then you have to learn how to move on without ever getting closure yeah so that's like another dimension I really have no agenda with where, the, I don't know where I'm going with all this, but... We are speaking. I'm just talking out loud and sharing <laughs> thoughts. Thinking out loud. <laughs> but I guess that's how I felt throughout the show. I was like, oh, like, if you just knew, like, if you just knew, like, how much they cared about each other, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, then everything would be okay. And partly, I think, like... You can confirm this because you're more familiar with the show than I am. But do you think that Jinx distanced herself in a way because she thought that she would make things worse for her sister? You mean like after the accident? Yeah. Or, well, her sister left her. She didn't really have a choice. Right. Um, but I think at that point, like her trust in her sister like broke so much because like like I was saying before, like. Her sister had always been there for her and always like supported her and said she was like perfect. And then like her sister was like, nope, you screwed everything up and I hate you. <laughs> um, and so like she's really that, realizing that like this love is like, it's not unconditional and that even someone she trusted as much as her sister is capable of like having bad intentions towards her or like not caring about her. Um, so she was like, okay. Like, clearly, um, I'm not who I'm supposed to be. I'm not, like, perceived as what I really am. And I'm not loved as who I really am mm. with my sister. So there's mm -hmm. no point in being around her because clearly I can't trust her to be there for me. Mm -hmm. So that's why she crawled into Silco's arms and was like, she's not my sister anymore. <laughs> yeah. The voice actress for her was, like, she was only, like, 11 or 13, some, something really young. She did a really great job. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I really liked how um, her sister, Vi, was not perfect either. Mm 
-hmm. You know, like nobody yeah. in that show was. Yeah. Which is really cool. Um, oh, here's a question from Brian. Does Evolve currently offer follow-on uh, advanced programs subsequent to the core curriculum, or is the main program designed to cover beginner, and intermediate, and advanced levels? So the there's we have two official programs currently. There's the foundation program and the advanced program. The foundation program will give you all of the skills you need to make professional level art, and um, it, like it gives you all of the, the knowledge and it really carves a way for you to start continue to build experience on top of that. And you can look at on our website, again, links in the description, check out our website and you'll see blocks one to four. And in block four, you'll see highly realistic paintings uh, being made as a, as a proof of the skills that they're getting. But then we build on to that in the advanced program, which is blocks five to eight. And that's teaching multiple techniques and like what May is doing right now is a whole kind of kaleidoscope of different techniques <laughs> happening together to the point that it's just easier to say that May is just painting right now <laughs> as opposed to following a specific uh, pro uh, like technique that we teach. But she's really combining them all together. Um, so we do have that advanced program and, the, and that program ends on doing master copies um, in the, in the, by combining different techniques together. And what's really cool about that is you start to really expand your repertoire and your ability to choose how you want something to be expressed. So one way that I think of it is like the foundation program is like learning how to write really good prose. Like you're describing like, you know, this is a boxing machine and then <laughs> this is a, a really sad figure in front. It's like very just, um, it's, you know, telling the story, but it's not quite poetry necessarily. Whereas like in the different techniques and things, you're starting to take some things out. Like, you know, poetry uses elements of less is more um, and to really like expand on the imagination. And there's sort of some, you could say, so to speak, some rules that are being broken in poetry. So the advanced program really sort of allows you to get more expressive and, and you decide how you, um, you know, convey the painting. You decide how you, what techniques you use to bring the painting together. And what happens is your personality tends to come out more naturally as a result. Whereas, you know, block four is very technical, very objective. Um, we try to remove as much opinion as possible. Um, so yeah, hopefully that gives you an explanation, Brian, about how that works. And then beyond that, we are thinking about doing some other things. I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, but uh, <laughs> we are constantly evolving and improving. Uh -huh. And so we're, we're looking out for um, for students who have graduated block eight. And we also like, you do have lifetime access to the program and access to the community. And so we do have students who are continuing to do work and they're still well connected. And, um, you know, so a lot of times there's still very much like, you know, information and advice being shared throughout, uh, but on a more organic level, it's not like, you know, a technical curriculum that they're going through at that point. It's just the relationships that they've built and are maintaining through the, the strong community in Evolve. Sarah Price said, I love Daniel's quote unquote currently. <laughs> and mm -hmm. she said, still holding out hope for more blocks. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Brian said, excellent, thank you. Planning out my enrollment strategy. Bandwidth has been limited in 2022, but very close to signing up, finally. Awesome. Yay. Quite excited for the journey. That's sweet, glad to hear that. Yeah, we're, we're excited to have you and we'll be ready for you when you join. Um, we actually are gonna be doing a, we just started talking about it. We haven't officially posted about it yet, but we, we'll be doing another live webinar um, coming up. And so if you have even more questions, you could ask us questions there, or you could even just send me an email. If you just email hello at evolveartist.com and then ask to, to talk with me, um, be happy to, yeah, just answer your more specific questions and see how we can help you specifically through that. Because, uh, you know, one of our big focuses in, in the education is being a guide. And a lot of times that looks like having specific goals and helping that student like move towards those specific goals, especially when it comes to a career and making money at this 
or if you're wanting to get into a specific niche and things like that. So, yeah, lots to discuss. Well, that boxing machine is starting to come together. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to see if I can adjust the focus on it because it's a little bit blurry. Mm -hmm. It's very, very pasta right now. It's got a nice chunky feel. Yeah. Similar to the arcane style. It's very chunk. The boxing chunk? Boxing chunk. The chonking chunk. <laughs> I'll stop talking. <laughs> the nameless subscriber said, don't know what it is, but it looks awesome. It looks dark, ominous, and awesome. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, the, Those are the like my favorite things, dude. <laughs> Dark, ominous, and awesome. <laughs> Choose three words to describe yourself. Dark, ominous, and awesome. <laughs> Here's the, the, the full reference. It's tough because I'm like layering so much paint on top of each other, so it's hard to get like a just like a clean color um, without it like mixing on top of what's already down. But, but it's okay, it's interesting. I said she was gonna do a, uh, the, do this in the vacant shadows technique. And I lied. Five. Yeah, she <laughs> yeah. is, that is not the direction that's been used to. <laughs> We're here for the ride. That We're happens a lot. It, so thank you, May. Mm -hmm. It's actually um, a scuffed version of what Kevin has described his technique to me as uh, when he works on like portrait commissions and stuff. Um, where he just does like a kind of transparent, translucent like flat pass underneath um, of like average colors and then he direct paints the lights and then like glazes and shadows. In one sitting? No, usually he does like, I think he just does the lights first and like just bits and pieces of the lights because usually the pieces are pretty big and then he glazes like in one sitting. Because it's just like huge areas. Mm -hmm. But but you're doing it all now. I'm doing it all now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Channeling your inner jinx, I see. <laughs> doing my best. The thing about like every frame in Arcane and like how you know that they know what they're doing is that like there is there are so many little parts that are like super super high chroma like between like the shadows and the lights, um, mm -hmm. just like along edges and like. Um, and like that's like how things are like in real life like when there's a shadow and a light and like even if it's like an edge so like um, even if it's like not like a smooth gradient like there will be like this tiny band of like super high chroma in between and they have that like just everywhere but it's like very tastefully done so it doesn't feel like oh they're just like it's so like bright but it's like it feels like super realistic and super alive because there's like this injection of color in all the right places and it's so nice. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you, I love when you get passionate about that. <laughs> it's so nice. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so good. Yeah. So enjoyable. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna go home. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm gonna go to this side. You say go home? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm gonna go, and I like didn't know what I was saying. But... It's 8-12. That's not bad. Thank you. So this is going to be a three hour painting, right? Yes, that is the plan. I think I can do that. It doesn't, it's not feeling super slow. Especially because like the way I'm doing this, I could literally stop at any point. As long as I like finish by putting in Jinx, I could kind of stop at any point. It would look pretty complete, I think. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of stopping, <laughs> since we're just talking away here, mm. Kevin once, uh, he's told me this story. He, well, let me give you some context. So in the, so in, you actually don't see this much, as much in Evolve because people will finish their painting and then take a photo and upload it. Mm. But here at the school where Kevin is there in person, a lot of students will really be 
worried about finishing their painting. They, they're, they're not as not confident when they when it's done. And so um, people will just you know kind of keep working at it and they'll come to Kevin and say, oh, Kevin, I don't know if I'm done. You know, Kevin's like, are you done? Like, <laughs> you decide, you're the yeah, artist. You exactly. Know? And, um, but they don't want to, they kind of want to get Kevin's approval, right. you know, and, and to do that is nice <laughs> so that they have a, a reason to stop or something. Right. But Kevin will never give that to them because yeah. he, you know, he thinks it's very important that they're the ones. Who set their standard. Yeah. So um, anyways, in one of these instances, Kevin said, Monkeys don't know when to stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then he proceeded to tell the story. I don't. I don't. I. I don't know. I haven't looked this up to verify how much of it is true, but. <laughs> and I, I mean, you know, it's Kevin, so I imagine it's more or less true. But here's the story. So, there were these monkeys in, I believe it was in San Francisco Zoo. Right. And you heard the story? Yeah. Okay. He used to like. <sighs> used to tell me that all the time because <laughs> I would... Uh, you were one of them, yeah. Yeah, because I would like over-render things and get like... I would have the curse of the small brush except the brushes were like really, really small. And so like I would... like I'd like ruin like a lot of paintings by just like going... rendering mm -hmm. things at like such a small scale so that like everything looked like really fractured. And like it was really detailed and it was like correct, but it just looked like broken and not mm -hmm. good. <laughs> so, yeah. Again. Yeah, well, so here's the story. So these monkeys in San Francisco, and um, it hits the news that these monkeys are making these paintings. And so it goes viral for a bit, and everyone's looking at these awesome <laughs> paintings that these monkeys are making. And, you know, they're selling for you know, a good amount of money and everything. Ridiculous And Kevin's, you know, talking about it. It's like, wow, like, so cool. And you're thinking, whoa, like, these monkeys are making paintings? That's so cool. And I know I've, I've seen, like, <laughs> paintings that elephants have done, which I think is really cool. Um, and then Kevin paused and he said, so who's the artist in this story? I'm like, uh, <laughs> the, monkey, the monkey, right? Like, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Kevin asks these questions and suddenly you're not so sure, you know? Yeah. But yeah. so it's like, the monkey? Kevin's, question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Kevin's quiet for a little bit. And then he says, whoever took the brush out of the monkey's hand is the artist. Let that sink in. <laughs> so it's like you ha the monkey has the brush with the paint and they're just going to keep painting. They're not going to stop. And whoever was helping the monkeys do the paintings, they would you know, take the brush out of the monkey's hand to stop the painting. And so that was Kevin's way of saying, don't be a monkey. <laughs> be an artist. Right. Be the one who decides when your work is done. Don't let somebody else take the brush out of your hand. So I always remind myself that when I'm coming near to the end, um, I'm thinking about how can I finish this painting, and I want, you know, I, it's like a, a natural human thing. You want to get validation before you say it's done. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you just have to put your foot down and say, no, this is done. This is complete. My intentions have been realized. You know? Right. The nameless subscriber says, I have a hard time deciding when a project is done. In truth, they're never really done. Sometimes <laughs> I'll put down a project and call it done, then pick it up again in a few years when my skills improved. Mm. So the, the inner Kevin Murphy in me <laughs> <laughs> would say to you to let the paintings that you do in the past just be as they are because mm -hmm. you'll create like a, a record of your progression and how you've improved over time. But if you keep working over on top of those paintings, then it won't be as easy to see the progression and to see how you've improved. And um, it can also create some complications if you're trying to fix previous mistakes in ways that would have been avoided entirely if you were to start from scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, but So Kevin really encourages his students to just let the painting be what it is, to appreciate the painting for what it is at the time that you made it. Because you're always going to be feeling like, you're always going to be improving, you're always going to feel like your past painting didn't hit the mark because that mark keeps getting higher as you learn more and improve your skill. 
So just learn to appreciate what you've done and stop there. And that'll help the, the, the paintings that you're currently working on be more enjoyable as well. Like right. knowing that this is the painting that I'm making for this moment of my life. And to still be able to be proud of that, even if you know that it could be better, you know, three years from, from then on. Yeah, like if you have, if your skills are better now, why not use them to create something new and complete that is all good rather than like, you know, spend your time and kind of repair something old and still, you know, kind of have that old skill mixed in with the new skill um, at the end of the process, right? That's kind of how I think about it. I'm like, why not just use everything you've got on one thing, you know? I'm enjoying those hits of red you're throwing in there. <laughs> Thank you. It helps feel like the red light is bouncing all around mm -hmm. that space. It's very pasta. The correct term is impasto, but I like saying pasta because it pisses Kevin off. <laughs> What's that? The, you know, like when you leave like chunky paint in, like with texture, it's called like impasto. Mm -hmm. But I say pasta because it sounds silly and ah. Kevin's like embarrassed by it, so <laughs> I say it. So it's like one day you're gonna be talking to a pro and you're gonna accidentally say the word pasta and then lose all credibility. I'm like, don't worry, I got this. <laughs> Just brightening up the the image here. I'm noticing that it's, <laughs> yeah. this, uh, the camera is not quite picking up the brightness of the painting where it's currently at.
I'm really just freestyling this. It was kind of fun. <laughs> I really, I don't know if I should start adding the fluorescent lights now or like if until like more stuff is in there. Really make it like come together at the end, you know what I mean? Kind of like best for last, but like is this the best or is like Jinx the best, you know? <laughs> Well, it's your art therapy session, May. So true. Paint how you feel. <laughs> I feel hungry. <laughs> feel hungry? <laughs> yeah. I lost my ID at school, so I haven't been able to, like, go to the dining halls and get food. Mm. Like, I ate, like, earlier today, but it was at, like, 12. So it's been a while. It's okay, though. Here's a question from Dina. Mm -hmm. If you have the wrong color on one aspect of the underpainting, do you leave it and paint over it when you are painting the second to final phase, or do you fix the underpainting before you continue? Um, usually I just paint over it. Because uh, like, at the end you're following the reference, right? So it doesn't really matter what stage you follow that in, unless, I mean, as long as it appears in the final, so. Also, if you fix the underpainting, it's like you probably have to like match everything in the painting beforehand and then like wait for it to dry and then seal it so you can see it properly and then paint on top of it and then like seal it again so you can see it. So it's just like kind of a hassle. Um, so like that's part of it too. I like to move through things as efficiently as possible. So. The paint in this light is going to have to be so thick in order to read as light because it's just like blending in with the stuff underneath. Mm -hmm. Just like a little frustrating, but no, it's okay. What if you use the palette knife? I've never done that before, <laughs> actually. <laughs> yeah, it always looks really fun, but I'm like scared. It is very fun. It what also if? is not what you would expect it to be. It's very scrapey and like huh. the look of palette uh, knife paintings, they look so kind of like loose and choppy, but it's very yeah. like, <laughs> like huh. sounding. Um, and uh, what yeah, if, it depends on how you apply it. But What if you do a demo job. real quick? What? What if, what if you hop on and just do a demo? You want me to hop on and do a demo right now? No, maybe not right now, after I like lay these <laughs> in and then just demo on top of them. To just jump in on your painting? I don't know. <laughs> Those look like very weak, silly lights, but it's okay. I'll just dump a ton of paint on them later. <laughs> I mean, you could, you could just try the I could just try it and ruin the whole painting. <laughs> Maybe you could practice on the palette. It's true. <laughs> I'm gonna fill other stuff first, and then I'll think about okay. this, this crazy, crazy move. <laughs> Maybe I could show you on the palette, if you want. That works, yeah, in a sec. I've never thought about how to teach it. <laughs> I kind of just did it one day. There's a first time for everything. I've seen like time lapses of it, like on the internet, but as we all know, like that doesn't ever really help. <laughs> Unless mm -hmm. someone's like breaking it down for you. So. I feel like it's pretty straightforward now that I think about it. Yeah. You just have to be very gentle and particular. You have to have enough paint on the palette. Like you don't want a very thin film. Yeah. Otherwise it'll, you'll actually end up scraping paint off. Right. So you want a good amount of paint, which is actually basically what, why I was recommending a palette knife in the first place. Mm -hmm. It basically allows the thickness of the paint to really drop on there. Right. So if you have, you don't want like, glooping globs <laughs> on the palette knife, but you would want 
it to be thick and then you just very gently rest it over that spot. Maybe come in at a slight angle if you want, to, want it to be a little bit thinner than what you're, like if the width of the palette, uh, palette knife is too wide for the section you're going for, mm -hmm. then you would come in on an angle and maybe you'd even be, it's very like application focused. Like you'd, <laughs> you would intentionally put the paint on that right side of the palette knife Okay. And then use that right side of the palette knife at an angle to lay it in. And actually, if you do that, you could actually like, create like a hard edge to a soft edge because you that like. Well, hold on. What are you doing? Like kind of like rotating it as you go, or just like moving it, like a scoop. Well, okay. you could do it in a lot of different ways. <laughs> I, I mean, okay. Yeah. <laughs> But what I'm saying is, like, if you have it on heavier on one side, mm -hmm. you could create a hard edge on that right. Let's say because I was describing it in the right side. Yeah. You could have a right edge. Oh, sorry. Have a hard edge using that right side, and then you drag it. it. Right. It's not so much like a scooping that. process because it's the like paint is flat. Drag. Like you could just drag across and kind of fade it off a bit, like just like you would for a brush. You put the edge down and you slowly fade out and release. Right. <laughs> We'll try it I mean, at the this end. is meant to be a therapy session, so I don't know if we'll try know, it out is this at the uh, end. this is not a suitable activity. Okay. <laughs> I want to try it though. It's always looked like really cool. So might not be relaxing, but it might be getting you out of your comfort zone. I don't know. You know True. how do you? However you take it, but it's you know. We don't have to do it if you don't want to. I feel like you're challenging me implicitly. No, I'm not challenging. You. <laughs> Just recommended it as an option. <laughs> That'd be interesting, like doing a whole live stream where someone is teaching somebody else how to do something and recording the whole thing in the moment. It's like um those like cooking shows. You have to follow like a master chef's like recipe. Oh yeah. Everyone's stressed out and you just zoom in on people and they're like sweating and like beating eggs like way too hard. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's a lot going on at once. We could have the, the audience vote. <laughs> do not do that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm relaxed enough that I could do something stupid and not think about it too much after. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it is 8.30. Cool. I'm gonna take a load of that and a load of this. I'm gonna mix it together. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy? It's gonna be insane. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Your um, head is completely over whatever it is that you're doing. I'm mixing. Um, these two reds into this like lighter thing so that it can pop out as a light but also be like saturated hopefully because mm -hmm. i want to just like put globs of paint and have that read as a light because the other ones aren't doing it there you go that's another way of doing it some dib dabs just abusing this brush <laughs> This is like the loosest I've ever painted, like intentionally. <laughs> I'm sure I've like really? done stuff like this when I was like really bad. <laughs> but yeah, I think so. I'm gonna try to move one of our lights a little bit closer to the painting so that we don't get as much glare on that right side of the painting. Mm -hmm. We might get more glare on the palette as a result, but I think our audience is gonna care more about the painting, so. Agreed. We'll see if this works, it might not. Also, this stand is really high. Feels a little, little bit. Uh... It's moving. <laughs> I'm gonna go take a look and see if that's any better.
think that helped a little bit. I feel like I'm doing things that I'm not allowed to. <laughs> this is just so chunky. Uh. This is fun to watch. Watch me committing heresy. A heresy? Heresy against the state. The state of direct painting. <laughs> you said this is the most, the loosest you've ever done, and you're doing it here on, on live? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd take that to another level if I use a palette, like, that'd be crazy. I think that was not the right color, so I'm going to cover it aggressively with another color. That's fine. Sarah Price asks, is this kind of what puddling would be like? Yes. I think so. Um, how big is this, May? It's 13 by 8 inches. 13 by 8 inches, Bill. Yeah, that was a good guess. Bill guessed 9 by 12 before he asked. I don't, I don't know what it looks like, we're just going to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Price said, I love the way the light is catching the highlights. I, I'm glad to hear that, because <laughs> to me it just looks very chunky. Bill said, I base the guess on hand size, brush size, and edge of her nose as it goes on and off screen to get his estimate of 9 by 12. Advanced psychological techniques. Which That's crazy. actually feeds back into what I was talking about earlier in what? seeing things in relation to each other. Proportional drawing. Ooh. Good job, Bill. <laughs> Glad to see that. All that proportional drawing training is going well for you. Yes, this is what it's all amounted to, so you can estimate the size of my paintings. There's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of light going on. Also a lot of paint going on the canvas panel, whatever.
was a lot more than I thought there would be. What was that? There was like a lot more paint on the brush than I thought there would be. And it kind of like made this little thing here. I might leave it like that. It looks kind of cool. It's like the wrong color, but like, it's fine. <laughs> Do you feel, still feel like that purple color mm. on the left side of the palette? Feeling a lot of this. It's very saturated. Mm. So basically you, you tend to scarlet. feel whatever you're painting? Yeah, I think that helps. <laughs> what does it look like, guys? Tell me, what does it look like? Because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you don't know what it looks like? Like, I don't know if it looks good or not, I just know it looks like chunky and interesting. I know it doesn't look like what I usually paint. <laughs> I guess because it's unfamiliar, I'm a little like, guys, feedback, please. <laughs> Am I on the right path? Help. Hey, man, monkeys don't know when to stop. So true. I stop after three hours, so <laughs> I think that's like better than the average monkey. Well, it is 840. That's not bad. Thanks for the time check. What I would recommend yeah. is that you leave that and start working on Jinx. You are correct. Yeah, I think that's enough for now. Okay. Okay, we do a little... As Kevin says, it's like a Sudoku puzzle. <laughs> You could burn a lot of time trying to find out if you like the boxing machine. Mm -hmm. Or you could simply work on the next obvious thing. And then it would be so much easier for you to know if you like the boxing machine as it is. And then to know what would need to change as a result. Very true. Thank you. Just sharing Kevin's old advice. <laughs> He's the, the master at painting efficiently. True. It's like I knew I was gonna do this painting loosely, but I didn't think it would be this loose. <laughs> but just going with it. I think it's coming along great, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> it's definitely different. <laughs> It's nice, now that we're zoomed in, we've got the full painting in the entire screen. It looks so <laughs> cool. That's good. 
It's good to hear. Debbie said, I'm not a judge of what is good, but I like this. The reds are nice, and the overall mood is compelling and draws me in. The more Thanks. you paint, the more I like it. Huh, thank you. I'm glad it's not like, the more I paint, the less you like it. That'd be sad. <laughs> Stop right there. <laughs> Monkey. <laughs> Also, I'll have you know that I'm recording this. Okay. <laughs> so, what that means is we're going to be trying to turn this into some cool Instagram reels, some YouTube shorts, with a higher quality capture. And it actually should be even higher quality than what the live stream is, which is cool. Mm. Love making content. Content, everything, everything is, is content. content. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been tainted. Now every time I like do something artistic, I'm like, oh, I should record it. And I'm like, I don't want to record it. I just want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you ever feel like that? You know, you're like, like, it's like, I, I don't want to feel like me just doing something without recording is like an intrinsic like loss. You know, but like I do. <laughs> it's kind of annoying sometimes. That's a lot of paint. Okay. That's, that's like a lot of paint. Okay. <laughs> Going in with a trusty old paper towel. On sacred techniques. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you wipe that part out? There was too much paint in that area and would have just interfered with like everything else. Also, I put too much like green into it, so it was like also the wrong color. Um, and yeah, it would have just been generally disruptive. Yeah, the light on her shoulder is very yellow. Mm -hmm. It's so small.
Uh, Bill just asked, I missed the beginning. Did you do a transfer? So actually, May did a uh, I guess you did a transfer, and then you did a first pass, initial pass, with just some of the basic reds in the background. Yeah. Um, that was like two days ago, so everyone two missed days that. Ago? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that additional hit of red you just put in those shadows look really nice on that figure. Thanks. This brush is all loaded up with like light blue right now, so let me see what we can do with that. And you want a different brush? Oh, the hair. Ooh, cool. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, she's got super long hair. Another thing, another symbol of like not ever growing up. Mm. Too much light. Bill asks, so having the, fir having the first pass in, will you concentrate on highlights or darker values or both? Uh, so her first pass was, for the most part, it was like, not even two values, like a real scrubbing in of just red for the most part. Mm -hmm. So she's really, this whole painting has been kind of, I would say for the most part, it's like start to finish, you know. It's like she worked with a, a painting with a red background and then all of the form and the yellows and the subtle purples and, and things have been what she's placed in. Um, so it's not just highlights and darker values, it's overall shadows, overall lights, and then she's dropping in the highlights on top of that as well. A la prima. A la prima. Gotta love it. I'm just gonna leave it like this. She just hair. <laughs> just hair. <laughs> she just hair. Uh. All right. She's got like these metal, like hair tie, hair holder things. And Sandra is asking, will you use thicker paint on the lighter highlights? I don't know if I can get much thicker on this pass, if I'm be honest with you. <laughs> um, I'd like to, maybe after it dries, I'll slap some stuff on, but we'll see. Yeah, Bill, so it's technically this painting, it would not be a purist a la prima painting. Um, by toning the painting in advance, um, it's a bit different. 
first pass was showing at the beginning. Again, it was really just a red background. So it's, it is still very much an a la prima approach because she's doing a lot of the work right now. I think everything is, I don't know that you've left anything uncovered. Um, only the parts I just haven't touched in general. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, so. First, I'm getting distracted. Uh, but then if, if May does decide to stop and then let the painting dry and then work other highlights on top, then this would definitely not be an a la prima painting. But if she finishes this today, then you could get away with saying that it's a la prima. I mean, I know myself, so I probably won't leave it alone. <laughs> but for now, it's not a prima. I think you could say that. It's time to start just adding in cool stuff wherever I want. <laughs> You're going to keep working in the background? Or? Um, what time is it? Oh, just knowing, wanting to know if to uh, move the camera. Oh, um, probably for a while. Yeah, a little while. Oh, I have to put in like all this shadow stuff. I like, totally forgot. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I can't do the fun stuff yet. Um. Um, I can use this brush, it's fine. Yeah, Bill, Kevin just texted me to confirm that having toned the canvas, regardless of how colorful or dense, doesn't make it less of an olive prima painting. So, hopefully, that clarifies for you. like this camera needs to be adjusted. When May prepared her palette, did she make any mistakes and have to wipe it off and remix, or did she work the cord, the cord out on another palette first? I didn't work anything out beforehand, and I didn't mess up disastrously. <laughs> so um, I was able to like just work with what I started off with eventually and get all the colors I needed. So. Still took me a while though, <laughs> all those colors. Took you like, what, half an hour? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it helped because like a lot of these reds and like some of the darker tones I'd like mixed earlier for um, 
for that first pass, so they were like a little more familiar to me. This is coming along really nicely, May. Thank you. It's fun. <laughs> So do you feel black now, looking with that dark <laughs> color there? I feel very purple, brown, blue right now, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dina commented that your palette has a lot of colors. It does. It certainly helps for a live stream like this. You can see she makes a lot of adjustments on the fly, even with all of those colors. But it helps her to make the adjustments more quickly so that we can continue to watch her work with the brush instead of the palette. Sarah Price asked, would Kevin call that magenta? I should hope not. It's very, I should hope not. No, it's very <laughs> dark magenta, so maybe. I think it is a magenta of sorts. No. I'm kidding. <laughs> maybe the way that it interacts with the red underneath. Oh, true. Helps contribute to that. There is like purple in there. It's not correct, but it's okay. <laughs> um, it's cool to see you working so quickly now that you know like what all your relationships are and where everything goes. Mm -hmm. Also, these are just flat shapes, so it helps a lot too. Yeah. But, but you also know that you can afford to be, to let, let your bro brush strokes be loose here. Yeah. Like if you had jumped into this part before you went all in impasto on the boxing machine. Mm -hmm. Maybe it would have taken you an extra few minutes. Yeah. Just wiping this part out because it's wrong. Kind of. It's good enough. <laughs> Separate. Putting that up there a little so it unifies, so it doesn't look like I just tried to erase. <laughs> um. That's wrong too. No, oh well. Okay, it's what multiple brushes are for, right? <laughs> um, the other one, this is, that's not clean, okay, that means I can use it, very good. I have no idea what you're saying, but that's okay. Yeah, that's okay, I'm just, I just like made a mistake, because I 
Because there's like other stuff going down here that's like also geometric shapes, and so I misread those lines in my transfer to be like lines for the fence. So I'm just talking about how I'm fixing that. <laughs> Remember those like high chroma like outline edges I was talking about before? I'm just adding those in right now because like this kind of very chromaless black color, blackish color um, against like the background looks looks kind of silly. So I'm trying to like add in very exaggerated um, edges of color. That's really bright. Um, Use that here and here. Nice. Okay. Be careful where your head is when you paint if you don't mind. That was underwhelming. Okay, more paint. That was aggressive.
Like the light just isn't bright enough. <laughs> it's just paint. Another trick to make the light look brighter is to make the shadows look darker, <laughs> so there's more contrast. If you just can't stack any more paint on top of what you already have. <laughs> I don't know if that worked at all, but I think up here that helped. But I don't know if I want to do it too much. Set so the overall composition a little bit. You're running back and forth to uh, <laughs> follow you around. I'm sorry. I'm working very, like, kind of stream of consciousness. Yeah, your, your brush strokes are just going this way, then that way. It's, it's fun. It's, it's like playing tag. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad, I'm glad you're having fun instead of being annoyed. <laughs> this is a really great study, May. Thank you. This is... This is fun. <laughs> Guess what time it is? 9.20? Mm -hmm. Really? Like yeah. exactly, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Nice.
I have even more time to play than I thought I'd do it. That's so good. Yeah. Just, you worked at a good pace. Now it's like, <laughs> now you kind of just get to play around. You've got everything blocked in. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Time to make Daniel chase me around with the camera. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I might end up just making some stuff up, like for fun. We'll see though. Oh, this is very blue. Probably can't use it again. This is, this is clean. Where's the, where's the dirty one? That's reddish. Perfect. So in Arcane, what character do you relate to the most? <laughs> um, I feel like I didn't really relate to characters as a way of like appreciating them. I just like thought they were well designed. Um, I feel like Jace is like the most normal character. Um, he's very he's like ambitious, but like also easily swayed and like kind of a people pleaser and. Um, like, he kind of, he originally has, like, really good intents with, like, the technology he develops, and then he kind of lets himself get carried astray because of, like, money, um, and, like, love, and, like, politics and all that stuff. So, I think he's, like, the most normal person. Um, but, I mean, I haven't gone through anything like that, I think, so I wouldn't say he's, like, the most personally relatable, but... I don't know. But I don't know that all these characters are extreme, but they still have struggles that are relatable, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like any good character has to be relatable right. to most people. You know, like the fact that he's got a high sense of morality, that's a huge sort of theme in his story, mm -hmm. makes him relatable. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that you have, you have to have the same experiences. It's true. But you might have similar values. RJD said, I'm amazed at how much you can get done in a few hours. I spend way too much time looking and thinking about my paintings. Well, I'm just, I'm thinking too, just like really fast probably. <laughs> yeah. So, same yeah, process. Yeah, if you've noticed, RJD, it's been a quieter live stream and even some of the questions that come in here I'm just I'm just deciding to answer them myself because I can see that maze in <laughs> hyper focus mode I'm scribbling this is professional scribbling how does that look atmospheric that's what I thought okay <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even see what you're doing I was just looking at the camera I was just like scribbling down here because it's like graffiti and stuff you know so mm. it made sense some scribbly dibblies <laughs> yes sir <laughs> You already know what it is. I like the boxer in the background, like his face keeps coming in and out of focus because I keep just messing with it. Um, we'll see where he lands. We have an idea. Mm. I think, okay, I'll try it. I'll see how it goes. It's like, cause there's like that bullseye in the back. I want to like do something crazy with it. That's enjoyable. I'm gonna leave it there. I feel like I kind of want to create like this sort of glow around Jinx, but I feel like it might look contrived, so I think I won't. That would be pretty hard to do at this point. <laughs> yeah. When there's so much paint down already. Yeah. It'd just be kind of like pasta, just against her edges. There's some pasta around the edges. 
then the background would start to compete with her. That's true. I'll leave it. Isaac, Isaac says hello from Mexico. Hello from New Jersey. Making me get up again to put the boxing machine in focus. <laughs> you can just have like the, can you just have the whole thing? I can't, not. Oh, I. Because well, I'm just like bouncing. <laughs> I could try. Actually, everyone in the comments, if you've been watching, if you notice, like if I focus over here on the left side of the painting, look at how blurry the boxing machine is. And part of that is because of the camera's aperture, which is very wide, which kind of creates a cool effect. And if my camera knowledge is correct, if I make the aperture smaller, the pit, this is going to get darker, but hopefully the focus will become less shallow. Then I would brighten the video with a higher ISO, which might make it a bit more greeny. But we've got great lighting, so we'll see. So the ISO is now, it went from 800 to 5,000. Now it's 6,400. But our aperture is at 8 instead of 2.8. So you guys can let me know if you think that the focus is better. Or if the, if the image looks better like this. Maybe the, yeah, I don't know. We'd like to hear your thoughts. Just exaggerating a lot of stuff for fun. Cool. Yeah, RDD, that's what I'm thinking too. And I wonder if I keep going, how insane does this ISO get? A thousand, one thousand, twelve, uh, thirteen hundred, or thirteen thousand, I mean. And then let's bring this down. This might be the the new camera settings for our future live streams. <laughs> Hopefully, I won't move around as much <laughs> in the future ones. And then maybe I can zoom in now. Glenn, right now the aperture is at 11. The ISO is 12,800. It's pretty substantial. That yeah, it is. It's quite a big jump. 
problem with going with too high of an ISO is that you start to get some green or some noise, which I'm starting to see. I don't know if it's appearing in the actual live stream feed for everyone else, but in the recording we might be picking up some artifacts. So I think I'll try to find a compromise and go down a bit. just so that the recording itself stays at a high quality. Well, Glenn, the problem is that we're shooting at an angle. So it's a flat subject at an angle. Because if we were going to shoot it head on, then May's head would be blocking the painting. So we're contending with depth from that perspective. I don't know, you might know more about cameras than I do. It's funny, for someone who's, you know, whose job with Evolve is based on his skill in painting, the amount of camera and video work I've been doing is quite a lot, which is pretty cool. It's definitely another art form. How's that? That's pretty, that's pretty enjoyable, I think. Time to just lay in. Look at you playing with those Look at this, those. Look at this chunk of paint. You can <laughs> see it, right? It's like yeah, 3D. Here, show the camera. This one? The other one. Oh, that's, well, that's definitely, all <laughs> just a blur. <laughs> Here? Yeah. It's like a little makeup thing. Boom! Oh, nice. <laughs> Holy! Wow! Okay. <laughs> wow. That's wild. That's just like paint. That's just a whole chunk of paint. I think the problem is though, the colors around it aren't light enough, so it's not like reading as it's glowing. It just looks like this giant glow stick, but you can fix that. It's still working, kind of. Yeah, you can, yeah, there you go. That's better. All right, now Glenn recommended that I drop this down to 5.6 um, in aperture. It's very precise. <laughs> and then 800 ISO. Now this is going to continue to get darker and darker. So here's my next question for you, Glenn. Um, the shutter speed is at 60 frames because we are recording in 60 frames. It's better. It's better. If I go, if I want it to be brighter with shutter speed, then I would have to go down to 30, but then we might be losing quality because it's a 1080p 60 frame stream. So I'll let you, uh, I would love to hear your advice on the next thing, but for now I'm going to bring this back up. Just be careful of your head there. Okay.
This light bulb's looking great. Thank you. Shame on me for distracting everybody with the camera <laughs> specs while you're making these cool little glowing light bulbs. You're good. Well, glad it helped, Dina. She said it was great to see the difference as you changed the ISO. Yeah. It's, uh... Boom! <laughs> Very <Sorry>. nice. <laughs> That's fun. Thank That's you. really cool. It's cool. It's like you're getting more and more confident as you work your way through this painting. Yeah. I can feel it. I can feel it. Oh, that is really nice. That is that's quite enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> you know when May starts stomping her feet that she's, <laughs> she's a happy painter. So true. There's like an invisible beat. I want Jinx to like should I, should I do the forbidden artist thing and use pure white? And just, pure white? Just straight from the tube. Pure just, white? Just lather it yeah, on there. What are you talking about, pure white? <laughs> I'm gonna do it. You're gonna do it? I'm gonna do it. Where? On her hair and like her shoulder. Boy. I seem very uncomfortable. <laughs> That worked. I think that worked. Still <laughs> zooming in. She's definitely jumping out now. So I don't want her to like compete with the fluorescent lights. You know, it's like painting is of jinx. It's not of fluorescent lights. Yeah, yeah, that, that feels, feels a lot more like it, I think, anyway. <laughs> they like changed the locks on the keys to the school. <laughs> Never allowed again. Good, man, it's looking good. Thank you. I'm having a lot of fun, as you can probably tell. <laughs> Who knew that art therapy would be so much fun? <laughs> You know, I zoom in on, on Jinx, and then you immediately start not <laughs> on Jinx. Sorry. You're jinxing me. <gasps> it's like the third wall. Or it imitates life, you know? For our next May live stream, we should do Chasing May around. <laughs> uh, around. <laughs> I don't know. You never know my next move. <laughs> <laughs> I like painting while I'm on a treadmill or something.
be really boring. <laughs> I know this color isn't like everywhere the way I like using it, but it's the only thing that's like sitting on top of what I have done already and like reading as its own color. So just using it. I lied, we're using other things too. You know what that is? Um, Robert um, says, I'm in NYC, can I visit your school? How do people usually visit? Yeah, so if you go to, we'll drop in the link, Arts Academy, let me double check that this is the right link before I send you to it. Um, but I'm going to send you the website to Kevin's school, which is where we're recording here. And um, yeah. Then um, you can reach out. Let's see, where's the contact info? Okay, so there's a number at the bottom of that website with uh, Kevin's contact info, and then just give him a call or, and yeah, give him a call and see if um, then you can kind of get a sense of when you could come in and meet with him, maybe during a class time. Classes are usually happening on Sundays and Wednesday nights during the school year. But uh, I would just double check with him first um, about that. But yeah, you'd be more than welcome to come and check it out. Her hand at her side is like in this little fist. I kind of want to like outline it. Very, very, very vaguely. <laughs> Okay, I'm zooming in on Jinx. Are you going to do something? Yes. <laughs> Score. Yes. The white in her hair and shoulder is like... I'm so pleased. Well, it's funny because that <laughs> white that you dropped in actually mixed with what's underneath. Exactly. To make it not white. Exactly. So I was concerned for a second, but you pulled it off. Good job. <laughs> I tell you, this is just as thrilling for me as it is for everyone else. <laughs> I mean, just like, yeah, doing a fun live stream like this and like seeing a painting happen from start to finish. Oh my gosh, May, you just went off and <laughs> went to like to somewhere totally else. I feel like a delinquent. Oof. Okay, now we're zooming out again. Put the focus over there. Three, yeah, two, one, so switch. Okay. <laughs> Was there any point in this painting where you started to feel like things were not going the way you wanted? Um, there were some parts where I was like, I don't know where this is going um, because I didn't know exactly what I wanted, but I'm quite pleased. Yeah, it's really cool to just do these kinds of live streams where you're really just playing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's just as fun for me as it is for you, <laughs> I think. Yeah. It sounds like you're having fun, so I'm going to oh, yeah. say Absolutely. that. <laughs> Ooh. 
<laughs> I like that. I like the way that's coming off the brush. Oh. Fun stuff, guys. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's important to reiterate here that you're able to have this kind of fun because of your understanding of the fundamentals and how these yeah. things work. Yeah, for sure. Like, you're utilizing your, and we talk about it again and again in Evolve, but it's your understanding of values, how light and how dark things are. Like, for instance, when you put in that, um, that bright yellow light, mm -hmm. it really started to, to change things because of the, it started to feel like, okay, that's a light source, and then everything's right. being affected by it. Right. And it was kind of alluded to, you know, in the beginning of the painting, but now mm -hmm. it's clearly established. Mm -hmm. And so that was a value move that you made. <clears throat> and then as you, you were saying, like, okay, now Jenks is not standing out as much as these yellow light bulbs. Mm -hmm. And so then you made a value decision on Jinx to bring her forward. So, you, mm -hmm. so May has this, you know, deeper understanding of how all of these fundamentals work, values, edges, and color. And she's combining them all together to pull things forward, push things back, and create different effects to get what she wants. And, you know, the way that she puts the strokes down is really just a creative expression of that. But it's all being supported by her understanding of knowing what shade to be using and where it should go generally and and to know that it's gonna create like an impression like this. So, really cool. So for all you guys out there, if you wanna be able to paint like this, <laughs> gotta check out Evolve. This is really like the goal, you know? Like, it's funny because our, our curriculum is so technical and we keep it very methodical and, you know, here's a clear process, do this and then do that. Um, you know, and it's not like, you know, paint this leaf here and then paint the highlight on this leaf. It's here is a process for making any painting and do that process technically. So that the process applies to, to any painting, but you're meticulously following the process and it can feel really rigid. It doesn't quite feel like the painting that we're looking at feels like right now, but it is actually the most effective path to getting down those, those rules of what brings, brings something forward, what creates an impression of, of form, what creates an impression of depth, and then knowing those things through an objective way is a very fast way of then being able to make stuff like this. And again, Picasso, favorite quote, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. And so May is making, she's kind of, she's free to just have at it and have fun because she knows these rules so well. Looking great, <laughs> looking good. It's just one thing, just one thing. You don't, you don't have to move the camera, it's okay. What's that? Boom. <laughs> That's nice. Wait, 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 come I, on. I have two stop more it. marks. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta zoom in. <laughs> you will not, you, and Daniel's like, you will not deprive the people of content. You will not. Okay. Wait, okay. wait. Just gotta make sure we're focused. Okay, we're ready. I'm about to go, go like pressure. right there in like what? two seconds. Over where? I, like after Over this, there. I'm going there. Okay, okay. I'm just warning you. <laughs> Same color though. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> hmm. This is, this is hard. See if... Oh, that's too strong. It's okay. <laughs> there is such thing Hello. as too much. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it's okay. You just repurpose that somewhere, probably. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't just, know where I'm going either. You just either. go to the very other side. I'm Come sorry. On. You ready? Wait, wait, oh, you're going up high too? <laughs> I have a lot of this color and I need to yeah. use all of it before I move on. That is an interesting way of thinking about, what, what? <laughs> I just went up to the other side. I'm just, 
<laughs> seeing where it belongs. Or it could work. Not really belong. And it was like, you're never allowed to do a loose painting ever again. <laughs> <laughs> no, are you kidding? We want more. <laughs> Happy to provide. Well, well, we'll ask the audience. Yeah. And we're like, I thought she knew how to paint. What is this? Yeah. What is this mess she's Who making? Knows? Maybe everyone in Evolve really likes the more realistic stuff, and maybe this isn't their jam. Maybe they're just cringing right now. Like, how is this even enjoyable? I'm just taking out this stuff and getting rid of more stuff on my brush. It, it looks cool though, but it like reads as a light source and that's like just wrong, so. Sorry. Get out. Goodbye. Get evicted. Sometimes it's not about what you want, it. it's about what the painting needs. Mm -hmm. Which is really about what you want. Because <laughs> you want the painting as a whole to function. That's better. That's nice and solid. Should I do like the... Um, like the little scribble things that drinks put in the back. I feel like that could be fun. Not like exactly, but she has like X's over this guy's eyes, kind of. It's uh, 9.51, so you got nine minutes to do whatever you want. Got it. Ooh, I should sign my name like that. Like, all scratchy and like in the middle. That could be cool. What do you think, Daniel? I agree. That looks nice and jinxed up. <laughs> Eric Price said that's a cool idea. Ooh, do you see it? Where? Right, here, right here, M, Z. Uh huh, cool. I'll define it like a little bit more. Um. Actually, the scratches help push the boxer back. Mm. Ah, that is cool. Meg, look at you. Look at what you're doing. Look at this. That's such an audacious signature, <laughs> but I kind of like it. That's <laughs> yeah, great. Wait, are you doing jinx again? I just put in one highlight. Just, just one, one thing. Just one highlight. I lied, two highlights. No, no, no. no. I really like the, uh, the camera shot when the Whole painting is like kind of one frame. Mm -hmm. You can't see everything, unfortunately, but it's pretty cool. It's juicy. Juicy, she says. That's enjoyable. It's like very enjoyable. <laughs>
So I put in a poll for our current live streamers here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, six people have voted so far, but it's 67% in the direction of more quick and loose paintings. Oh, more chunk. Very good. More chunk. More chunk. I'm fine with that. <laughs> this is just, it's so different from what I usually do. And it's just like very, very enjoyable. I'm genuinely impressed by how much you've done. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad I went into this with like no expectations because I honestly mm. didn't know what would happen either. But I don't know, pretty happy. Pretty happy. You know what Kevin says, art is all about intent. <laughs> yes, and I'm the, I'm the counter example. Okay, we got 10 votes and 70% now in favor of quick and loose paintings. It's because I seem happier. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you have pleased the crowd. I have May. pleased the crowd. You have pleased the crowd. So that was like the least stressful signature I've like ever done. That was so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, bam. It's just, it's like it blends in too. It's like with the scratches, you know, so. I'm pleased. I am also pleased. <laughs> so, I know on the previous live stream, when you did your first Ala Prima painting, yeah. I didn't say anything oh, oh. because yeah. I wanted to own the painting myself. And after the live stream ended, I asked May, if she was selling the, uh, the Fallen Angel copy that she did. And as a result, I acquired <laughs> said painting. You did. But I don't think it's fair <laughs> for me to do the same for this one. So Meg, are you selling this painting? I really like it. <laughs> hey, you don't have to. Mm. So, what I'm saying is, I don't think it'd be fair for me to buy this. Why, why wouldn't it be myself? fair? Why not? Well, because there's got a lot of other fans here, May. Really? Oh, I mean, people like in the chat. watching you on the stream. <laughs> so I'm, you know. If anyone's interested, you know, like, I'll think about it. You'll think about it? But right now, I really like this painting. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we'll see. So maybe you'll maybe you'll post something on your socials if you decide to to part with it. I mean, if anyone's interested, they should like let me know now so I can like think about it. Cause like, <sighs> Ugh, this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I don't know if like yeah like I don't know if there's like actually interest. So I don't know if like I should even like think about it or not. So it'd be nice if people like let me know. Daniel, do you want this painting? <laughs> <laughs> Daniel's like, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Glenn said, no, May, keep it. Just do a print. That's a good idea. If people are interested in prints, because like prints are kind of hard to make these days. I think, I just think that, um, you know, I'm the only person who's here in this room right now. <laughs> yeah. And I could close a deal with you right after this stream. You could. I just don't <laughs> think that's fair. <laughs> mm. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give it some time. Yeah. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let people uh, mull it over. Mm -hmm. And, uh. That works. Yeah, you guys mull it over. And then I'll see what happens. Yeah. See if it's still available. And then we'll talk, May. Okay. So I do really like this. <laughs> I 
it's like obnoxiously signed and everything, you know? It's like, <laughs> what else could you want from an original? Right. It has May lit written all over it, literally. <laughs> yeah. I just graffiti artist myself into the painting. <laughs> That's so funny to me. <laughs> Do you like this this bit I did in the middle of the target? It's like red, like. <laughs> oh, I do. Yeah, I saw that. I yeah. saw that go down. That mm -hmm. was awesome. Mm -hmm. You see how aggressively I did this stroke here too. Uh, the camera can't see that. Um, it was just like one of the lights at the bottom. I just like took the brush and just like. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. Yeah. Though you might yeah. have fan brush that down. I might. BT dubs. It looks so nice. Is it too much? I don't know. It could just be the inner artist in me just sees the side brush stroke. Oh, this one? For both of them. Oh. True. I don't know if, you know, non-artists would appreciate that. But for me, it's sort of, I just immediately think like, oh, mm -hmm. that needs to be fan brushed down. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, suddenly the blue just popped just because you changed the direction of the brush strokes. Mm -hmm. Also because I added like some chev, chev blue oh, yeah. straight from the tube onto the brush, into the painting. Well, that'll do it. Yeah, exactly, Becky. So I'm, I'm just, I'm saying I'm, I'm not gonna buy it immediately. I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna give other people a chance. Yeah, if you want it, you should message me or email me. It's Mazang Rocks, just my name, and then R O C K S at gmail dot com. Or I mean, You're, we have your Instagram URL yeah. at the bottom. If you check out the descriptions mm -hmm. of this live stream, mm -hmm. you could DM me. Dina said, "I love the signature and where it is." Thank you, me too. <laughs> Sarah Price said, the blue is gorgeous, almost like a glaze. Yeah, it's, it's enjoyable. <laughs> Thank you. So the, the poll ended with 67% in favor of... That's a decent majority. like this, essentially. But like a third of people still want like all that slow stuff. That's... Impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's it's just different that's, tastes. Yep, that's important. Yeah. Good for us to know. Because mm -hmm. we have, my hunch is that um, people who are not artists would be a lot more interested in seeing something from start to finish. Yeah. But the people who are artists and, you know, might want to see like a really fully fleshed out painting and mm -hmm. see every little bit of the detail and um, to do something more refined. That's fair. Yeah, Becky, so the the door window thing behind <laughs> the character. Um, actually, I haven't pulled up the reference in a while, so there's the reference on the side, and here's the bigger version of it. So it's actually like a a boxer in the background. I think I'm good. That's the oh, first time I'll be saying that. <laughs> and then I'll say it like three more times, then that should be done. <laughs> if you're referring to the black thing behind her, then yes, that is a fence. Oh, this thing? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, it's okay. I, I like touched the painting, so I thought I'd scrape some stuff off, but it's like fine. By the way, May, it is 10.03. Okay, I'm, I'm fine to like stop. This is like, this Just is Just like that, huh? This is, that was a lie. Oh, one more.
Oh, I see, Becky. Yeah, so the if you look closely, there's an M and a Z on the left side of the boxer figure in graffiti on the wall. M, Z. <laughs> that helps. Thank you. Yes. My pleasure. This is too bright in the middle. And it looks, it's like messing with what the form looks like. Because it looks like it's like popping out, but it's like flat glass. So I need to flatten it. I don't, I don't like that. Undo. It's fine. Also, at some point, I'd like to move the camera mm -hmm. and sh show it head on. Sure. Yeah, you can do it now. I think I'm, okay. Yeah. I will stop. I will actually stop. <laughs> camera. That's crazy. I made that like just now. You made that. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm pretty sure there's a reel about that. Like I just made this or something. Um. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. The real trend. I know what you mean. I forgot the exact words, but I know what you mean. Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> May finally step back from her work and she realizes how nice this is. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. You, you like it? I like it. You gonna part with it? <laughs> right now. <laughs> Unless someone makes me a crazy offer. I, Prince would be fine though if people are interested in it and I end up deciding I will not part with it. Um. Will you post a good photo of the painting somewhere, Daniel? Yes, probably in Facebook, right? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, one thing. Mm -hmm. So for everyone, if you're curious, May and I will often like we'll create a thumbnail <laughs> afterwards. Mm -hmm. May, would you like to create a thumbnail while right we're still now? Live streaming? Sure. So usually we'll I, just do something like I do. a single brush in the, whoa, switching I'm angles here. I'm signing my name. <laughs> signing your name. I don't want to hide the blue though. There. Cool. How's that? <laughs> uh, you can get your hand in there a little bit more. Maybe if your hand is a little bit on the right side, like covering up some things. Maybe you're like <laughs> about to work on the, the arm of Jinx. I would, I would move your whole body on the, on the right side. Keep going. All the way across. Keep going. This way. And then move your head out of the way. <laughs> Not down. <laughs> Can you move it back? There you go. Yeah. I think something like that. Mm -hmm. now, you're, now your head is blocking it. Because the angle is different on the, uh, the painting. There we go. And then just rotate the brush. Looking good. Thank That's you. our thumbnail, maybe. 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 Unless there's something better. I might show something in progress instead, but there you go, everybody. That's how we make thumbnails for our YouTube channel. <laughs> well, it's like right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I, I set the cameras over there now. The eye of the beast. It's like that scene in um, Pirates of the Caribbean where like Jack was like abandoned on like his whole ship and then like that giant like Kraken thing, it's like a massive octopus with four million tentacles and like three rings of teeth. And he's just like, hello, beastie. And then he just like jumps into it and just like the whole ship goes down. It's crazy. <laughs> that's how you feel right now? That's what this feels like. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what the camera feels like. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I have to ask, and this is for everyone as well. I'm going to grab the, uh, the old Holland color chart again. 
How are we feeling? How are we feeling, everybody? I want this to become like a theme for our art therapy sessions. Yeah. Um, Growing self awareness. Yeah. But in colors. Where is this? Uh, I had this website up a moment ago. <laughs> Old Holland oil paint colors. All right, so I'm pulling up a, a little chart to help everyone, but basically the idea is how are you feeling at the present moment if you were to describe, or if you were to describe how you feel using Old Holland oil paint colors, what color would you choose? Just give me one feeling second. Feeling this highlighter. A whole bunch of options. Feeling this highlighter yellow right now because I'm happy. <laughs> Here's the link. Wait, this? are you are you painting right now? I just moved hey. paint around. I didn't apply paint. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, okay, like fan brushing it down a little bit. There are like some pastas that like came out a lot, so I just kind of like tap them. Okay. okay. So but overall look did not change. I promise. Okay, okay. You know we're a very uh, curious sort. <laughs> You're out, sorry, the camera's over there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the thumbnails. <laughs> okay, what are people saying? Uh. Yes, we'll post a photo. Nice work, thank you both. Thank you. What is the source material for this painting and are there copyright issues? So. I don't think so. We don't think so. Um, given the nature that this is, uh, like it's made a departure from the original piece, but this comes from Arcane. Um, there's a lot of fan art around Arcane. And um, if we're contacted, then we'll sort that out. But. I, to, my, to the best of my knowledge, this being like a video that we made um, with this intention and this purpose, I do not believe it, it is. Um, but that would be something that would be figured out. Anyways, mm -hmm. yeah, so if you use that link, you can describe how you're feeling. Um, always curious is to sort of see if people's mood color changes over the course of an evening. I know for me, I had chosen this evening the C49 Chev Green Deep. What am I feeling now? <laughs> You're like a look at the painting. I'm, yeah, I'm looking <laughs> at the painting. Like, I, I don't feel the Chev Green Deep anymore. But what do I feel? Or what are my feelings? Something brighter, mayhaps? I think being exposed to so much red, I am definitely leaning towards the reds. They keep <laughs> catching my eye. I would say, man, there's three that look really similar. The D160, D160, uh, C163, C28. I would say the Carmine Lake Extra. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm feeling. I'm feeling very like passion, like I'm uplifted by seeing this awesome painting that you made, May. Thank you. <laughs> and I feel inspired and invigorated. I'm happy to hear that. Feeling the red colors <laughs> seeping into my soul as I look at your Whoa. painting. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> my soul. My soul. My Sarah soul. Price said bright violet. Dina said it was priceless to see May's happy face when she <laughs> looked at the painting a few minutes ago. Oh, that's so cool. I made right. that. <laughs> and May, how are you feeling? What color? You can just point to your painting. Bam. Bam. <laughs> yellow. Yeah. This, this, Cheerful yellow. Yeah, highlighter yellow. I'm also really enjoying this blue. This, the blue like, down there? This hit of blue. It's mm -hmm. like not even in the reference, but that's just how it came off the brush, so I'm leaving it that way. <laughs> that's awesome. Great. I love my signature. I just have to say, like, you know, because like a lot of the symbols here are like smaller too, so I could have just like scribbled it in here, but I was like, no. It's gonna be bigger than like Jinx. <laughs> it's pretty funny, but I like it. I'm very pleased. <laughs> wow, it's so textured. I'm like looking at it from down here. It's, it's yummy. Cool. All Hi. right, well, thank you everybody so much. <laughs> Again, if you want more Evolve content, then check out the links in the description. Those links take you to videos that are not on YouTube. They are high, high value videos worth mm -hmm. looking into. If you want to play around 
like Matt has been playing around. Learn the fundamentals. Don't try to do this. Don't do this at home. <laughs> Don't do this at home. <laughs> grab, a, grab a sphere, a can of beans, maybe work in grayscale. <laughs> Better yet, check out the Evolve program and get a real sense of how we approach paintings so that you can very quickly get to a place where you can play and have fun mm -hmm. and make beautiful paintings like this. Thank you, May. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for having me. <laughs> of course. And I think we are signing out. Yeah, we are sending out. Woohoo. <laughs> <All right. laughs>